Welcome to another tutorial from Ada LLC. My name is Aladdin and I'm a senior engineer at Ada LLC and today I'll be presenting our software FRP Beam Strengthening Analysis, the premium version 4.0. This, this version is equipped with flexural and shear design and analysis capabilities. The main interface is divided into a number of sections and every section is, is divided into a number of subsections. The first section is the material properties and it's divided into the concrete subsection, steel subsection and FRP subsection. Uh, for the, for, to define your concrete properties, we need to define the compressive strength of the concrete, the modulus of elasticity, the tensile strength, the strain at maximum compressive stress known as epsilon prime C and the maximum compressive strain epsilon CU. You can define the compressive strength and ask the software to use the default equation from the code to calculate E concrete, FR, epsilon prime C and epsilon CU by checking the default values. Alternatively, you can choose your own values by uncheck the default value and insert your own value. For steel properties, you define for the longitudinal steel, you define the yield strength FY and the modulus of elasticity ES. Similarly, for the transverse steel, you define FY and ES. For the FRP subsection, you, you will define the longitudinal FRP for flexural design and analysis and the transverse FRP for shear strengthening. For the longitudinal FRP, you will be defining the modulus of elasticity for FRP EF and the ultimate structure strain epsilon FU star without any reduction. Uh, you will define the material type either carbon, glass or aramid based on ACI 440 and the exposure condition is interior, exterior and the aggressive environment. The material type and the exposure condition will determine the environmental coefficient and the reduction in the rupture strain and the rupture stress. Similarly, you can use the transverse. Uh, for the transverse FRP, you will define EF, the modulus of elasticity of FRP, for the shear reinforcement, for FRP shear reinforcement, and the rupture strain epsilon FU star and the material type and the exposure condition. For the geometrical properties section, you will choose what kind of cross section you're going to use either a rectangular cross section, a T beam cross section, and L beam cross section. For each input, you will see the graphics to tell you uh, what is this, what does that property or what this value represents. We have the flange width, we have the cross sectional height, we have the whip width, and we have the flange height, and we have the side clear cover for the flexure reinforcement distribution. And then for the steel details, you can either use the bar number, number three, number four, number five, or the bar diameter in inches or in millimeters. The software is equipped with four layers. One of them is in compression and the other three is in tension. For each layer, you will, decide, you will define the number of bars and the bar number or the bar diameter and the layer depth measured from the top of the section. For the transverse steel reinforcement, you will decide on the tie bar number or the tie bar diameter, the tie bar spacing center to center between the stirrups or the ties, and the extra shear legs. The default is 2, but if there is any additional shear legs, you will be inserting the number here. For the FRP geometrical properties, for the longitudinal FRP, you have the option to use the sheets or plates or the NSM bars or the near surface mounted bars. For the sheets or plates, you will decide on the number of layers, how many layers of FRP, how many sheets, and the layer width and the layer thickness and the soffit strain at strengthening known as Epsom BI measured at uh, the construction of the FRP or the laying of FRP, you can ask the software to calculate this value for you based on the construction live load moment. 
If you choose to use the NSM bars, you will be inserting the number of bars or tapes, the tape area or the bar area, and the depth of the bar measured from the top of the section, and also Epsilon BI. For the transverse FRP, first you need to decide on the scheme of shear strengthening, either fully wrapped, a U wrapped, or two side, two bonded sides uh, shear wrapping. And for each one of those schemes, you will be putting, inserting the number of layers NF, the strip width WF, and the strip thickness, strip spacing center to center SF, and the FRP shear depth measured from the centroid of the tensile forces. The default value is uh, 90 degrees they're putting the stirrups or the shear FRP stirrups at 90 degrees but you also have the option to put them at a 45 degree angle the next section is the service moments and shear inputs you will be you inserting the dead load moment the construction live load moment which is used to calculate epsilon bi and the upgrade live load moment, the moment that you are looking to achieve or strengthen the section to reach that moment, uh, the live load moment, and then we have the ultimate shear. Next we have the process section, and in that section you have all the controllers to submit your inputs, to clear the inputs, to design or anal anal uh, analyze the section that you inserted as well as the screenshot save and a screenshot save and the report. In order to run an actual case and use these controllers, I'll be using a saved input file that I have. I will use file and then open. I'll go to the place where I saved it and I will load it as a, I named it here example and I'll open and everything will be loaded uh, for me. I can also save my input using this save tab or exit the whole application from here. I also have an help for the about and the disclaimer. I have the notation which is having a PDF file with the detailed uh, information for the properties and the parameters and how to use the software as well as how to use uh, your units. So we have the option to use US units for KIPS inch and KSI or SI units with kilonewton millimeters and megapascal. I'm going to submit my inputs and I'm going to see that my section makes sense. I have my concrete, I have my stirrups, in red I have my longitudinal reinforcement, I have one layer in tension and one layer in compression, I have my red longitudinal FRP and I, then I have my green FRP, shear FRP uh, in a U-wrap scheme. I'm going to click analysis and I'm going to see my failure mode. My failure mode is debonding of FRP and I will have all the outputs in the right section, uh, the results section. I will see the strain profile, I will see strain at the top, the strain at the first layer in compression, the strain at the first layer in tension, the strain at the soffit side of the beam. And then I will see the unstrengthened moment. I'll see the strengthened moment, the maximum compressive strain, the compression depth, the maximum tensile uh, steel strain, the debonding strain, and the effective strain of FRP, and I will see the reduction factor, I'll see the FRP depth, the failure mode, and then I will go for the shear calculation where VC is calculated for me, VS, VF, VN, and VVN. And then I'll make sure that uh, all these are green, I have a successful analysis, which this, the first, uh, the first part here is to cover the serviceability. I need to make sure that the steel stress under service is less than 0.8 FY and I pass this requirement. The FRP stress under service is less than 0.2 FFU and I pass this requirement. My concrete, the maximum concrete stress in service is less than 0.6 F prime C and I pass this requirement. 
and then I, may, I need to make sure that VMN is bigger than MU. VMN from the table here is 45.81 and my MU is 18. I have VVN bigger than VU and I pass this requirement also. VVN equal to 23.63 and VU equal to 23. And also one of the requirements that the VMN without FRP need to be bigger than MN existing and I pass this requirement. I have my VMN without FRP equal to 28.16 and my MN existing is 12.2. At this stage I finish my analysis process for Flexural and Porsche and I can generate a fully detailed report with complete input parameters, definitions and equations. I click report and I save it on my computer. The report consists of the sectional properties, the material properties and then the flexure analysis with all the equation used, uh, the longitudinal steel and epsilon bi uh, calculation and then we have the shear analysis uh, with a fully detailed equation that we used and a, fully def a full definition of the parameters used and then we have the result section for the serviceability and for strength. It's worth mentioning that the software is equipped is equipped with an internal library to use uh, from manufacturer. We have right now we have Geotree Solutions and we have Structural Technologies for transverse reinforcement or the transverse FRP or the longitudinal FRP. You can click one of those manufacturer and you will see a full list of their products with a complete description of the product with the models for elasticity, the maximum tensile strain, design thickness, and the material type. You click choose and it will be reflected in the main form and you can use it in the analysis. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the optimized design. The optimized design is used to create a different combination of design for flexural and shear to fulfill the, the strength and the serviceability requirement. When you click Optimize Design, you'll be required to insert MU, the FRP design. Uh, you can use the number directly from the combination of 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load, or you can insert your own number. Uh, if you would like to design for strength and serviceability, you will be inserting also the service moment. And then you click Design. This curve and the x-axis, you will see the number of FRP layers and then on the y-axis you will see the moment. The black horizontal line is the MU that you are looking to achieve and the other lines, the right in this case they are on top of each other, are the, st uh, the, the serviceability requirement, the FFS, the FS, uh, FS, FSS and FCS and FFS limits from the ACI 440 and then the red line is the design combination Right now, uh, NF equal to 0.54 will be enough to fulfill the strength and the serviceability requirement with a debonding of FRP as a failure mode. The zigzag typically represent the debonding failure mode and the more straight line is a concrete crushing failure mode. You can see a tabulated data for all these designs you will see for a, for a certain NF, you will get a VMN, you will get Epsilon FE, Epsilon CF, and Epsilon ST for the steel, the depth of the compression block, and the failure mode. Early in the design, we have typically just a debonding of FRP. Toward the end, we start to have a concrete crushing. But, th but in the design process, you would like to get, to get the most Perspective, you will be getting the first intersection between the red and the highest horizontal line. In our case, it's MU. It could be a different limit, but you will get the intersection between the red line, the red curve, and the highest horizontal line. To see the FRP design for shear, you just need to close this, and then you will see the transverse FRP design. Similarly, the red 
uh, the black horizontal line is VU that you're looking to achieve and then the red dotted one is the maximum limit that we cannot exceed according to ACI uh, 440 and then th these lines these four straight lines represent NF equal to 1 the the red one and then the blue one NF equal to 2 the green NF equal to 3 and the fourth one is NF equal to 4 to get your design, you will be looking for the intersection between these four lines and the horizontal black line. So if you're going to use NF equal to 1, just one layer, you will be needing a ratio of WF over SF, almost 0.3. If you're going to use NF, for example, equal to 4, you're going to use 0.15 of WF divided by SF. WF over SF is the ratio of the width of FRP shear ply to the spacing of the FRP shear plies. And on the Y axis, you will see the phi VN. Similarly, you can see this graph in terms of number, the number of layers, WF over SF ratio, the phi VN, and if we achieving, if we pass the ultimate or the maximum um, V according to uh, ACI 440 and ACI 318 and then we have VC, VS, VF and all the parameters used in the shear uh, design. You can also print the graph for your convenience. The optimized design is a very powerful tool to, to get a quick design for flexural and for shear just with few clicks and you get different ranges and you can get the optimized and the most effective design based on your inputs. This is the end of our video. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or you would like to get your own version of this software, please visit us at www.ada.app.